hey you down here where um, I am we am doing a virus scan with VBA rescue on this Dell 1525 laptop the uh, screen I'm trying to get it to work and show up I don't know if it can be read it looks pretty small let me read it um, thing I wanted to note is uh, control C will terminate program execution go down here to it. I knew it would probably go up above, uh, go away as the program keeps working well, there's a couple of infections let's see um, Broadcom wireless card says it has that's the drivers for the wireless driver which I downloaded from the Broadcom website it says it has vscope trojan and uh, vscope trojan what's the other one 174291 execute I'm not sure what yeah it's part of the Broadcom wireless uh On some of my uh, my ISOs and Windows executes, it says it has a Trojan agent. All I can see is Tor. It's a pretty fast scanner. Uh, it runs in the command line instead of with a GUI. So it makes it. I think that makes it a lot faster, a lot less overhead. Yeah, the only thing is I can't read the actual file names. B scope. B scope. I also told it to scan emails. I told it to scan basically everything in the system. So uh, if it find, you know, if it can get to any emails, it'll scan them. I'm not sure if this uh, uh, VBA Rescue can actually mount Linux. This is a dual boot system. It has Windows 7, which that's where it is right now. I can tell that. It has Windows 7 and uh, Fedora 21. Um, actually it's kind of hard for me to tell I make that folder Linux distros and stuff and uh, sometimes I put, I put I don't remember to be honest it says mount SDA1 but which one did it think was SDA1 different program see your drive layout differently it's only one hard drive in there anyway so there is only an SDA well there'd be a yeah, there'd be an SDA 1 and 2, and see I have 3, 4, something like 4 of them, I believe. I uh, have a FAT32, FAT NTFS, EXT4 for the boot for Linux, and then uh, LVM. And, and I don't believe this program can mount the LVMs. I was kind of worried, well, if I was just, because it, it gave you the old Windows style, said, uh, what drives do you want to scan? You know, C, D, and E. You know, like, well... That doesn't tell me anything about what drives they really are, because when you boot to a, uh, I'm booting to a action and booting to an SD card and an USB adapter, and when you boot to external devices like that, you know, not the internal hard drive, then your uh, your Windows type uh, drive letters get swapped all over the place. So you you have to get familiar with that program, and I haven't used it in a year at least, so. And it didn't tell you, so I'm not 100% sure what what it would uh, make what. What drives would be what letters is what I'm trying to say. That B scope. I knew that Windows 7 was running bad. I've scanned it with about three other things, and it cleaned some stuff out. But it still didn't help. And uh, oddly enough, that uh, folder, one of my, one of my folders with... Uh, that driver it was mysteriously locked and I couldn't it was in I had it uh, copied it over to uh, one place and I wanted to delete it from the other and I couldn't delete it so this may be a real deal this may really be an infection I mean usually these programs don't call them uh, Trojans unless they're Trojans I'm hardly ever so you'll see adware malware alerts and things that are really just ads and that's why you got it free or call it malware when it's probably an ad that's why you got it free but this is a driver 
The only thing is I really, just because I did download it from the Broadcom website don't mean it couldn't have been infected, but I'll tell you one that's always showing up with infection, and that's HP driver software, HP printers and scanners. I mean, the one, I, all of mine I got straight off the CDs or DVDs that came with them. But, uh, and you're, you know, mine are all several years old, like five to ten years old, or three to ten years old, five to ten years old. And they'll show up in every scan of any, just about anything. Malware, cryptor. That sounds bad. That might be one of those things that tries to encrypt your hard drive. That is. Boot, boot, IA32F, EFI. As long as it's in distros and ISOs, it's, if it gets uh, deleted, then it's not the end of the world, even if it's something that... Some things that show up as false positive that are uh, in my Linux. Some of my Linux software will show up in Windows. Virus scanners is a false positive. But... Um, yeah, it shows the first part where it is, and then it's cut off right there in the middle. Uh, so I can't see the actual. <coughs> start coughing now. Can't see the actual name. Some of it says suspected. Now I didn't tell it to delete suspected. It is kind of an odd uh, set of choices. It looks like what it's going to do though is move the suspected to the quarantine, which is. Usually not hard to put back if you want to, but um, with the graphic program, but with this one, I don't know. <laughs> I might have made a mistake. Um, the graphic user interface and type program. But I can't believe all those. Oh, Sardu. Yeah, they're always saying Sardu has a Trojan Auto It virus. I don't think it does really have a I mean I don't think it does it's always possible that somehow one of these programs that had was good when I downloaded it uh, got infected and it's just been sitting on my system that my Linux system when I copy it over because sometimes you know these uh, some uh, malware are are there worms they'll crawl through your system and infect other everything they can your network everything so uh, but I don't use windows very often for that very reason but I've been using it lately to mess with my new phones because there's a program called my phone Explorer that uh, and some that I can use to control my phones and see the uh, screen on the computer big enough I can read it and so I used it to help set up my phones because it was I can really see these are only four inch screens. It's a little I got two little phones I got from Walmart. They're 1488 each or quad core with uh, gig of RAM and well they only had like four gig of internal flash memory and uh, I bought uh, 64 gigabyte flash uh, micro SD card flash card flash memory cards put in them. So uh, you know I got plenty of space now. So I can make my videos and stuff, but uh, I'm reading the screen again. Read something. Zip. Ext to exp explore. Yeah, that's a file I've had for a long time. Uh, ext2 was the Linux file system at the time, and it and it will uh, you can install it on a, I think you just run it, but yeah, you install it on a Linux syst system, and I mean on a Windows system you can read Linux file system. It'll work with ext2 and I think ext3, but not ext4. I've had that one around for a long time. I don't remember seeing it coming up in any scans. It says it has infected hoax. Dot smsr. I don't know what that is. Some of these um, probably false positives. And all of them that, uh, I believe the ones in red are going to get deleted. And like I said, it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. If I can get this system cleaned up, that's fine. And I've been, I've, I've scanned it with, uh, it's funny because I've already scanned it with, uh, which I can remember the names of each one, but three, four other 
scanners, maybe more than that. Let's see, I scanned it. I believe I scanned it with uh, uh, Clam AV from within my Linux system, which is pretty strict, and you got to watch out for false positives there. I scanned it with a VAST, which boot time scan, which is on the Windows system, which you know can get fooled with your systems and uh, infected. But I did that after I ran three or four of their scans. Uh, let's see, and I did. Uh, Three, at least three other rescue. He said, maybe a Vira. I can't. Anyway, three other um, rescue. You know, rescue Linux boot rescue virus scanners. And I decided I always used. To, I used to use a VBA rescue on systems that were too old, uh, not powerful enough to run the graphic user interface. And I thought, well, you know, it's a pretty good scanner. I'm going to try it. So I tried it. Yeah, got the new. Have the newer version of it. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised that after all those scans that this stuff is showing up like this at all. Um, I don't know about that. I couldn't delete, I tried, like I said, there's, I don't know, I believe I can delete one set. There's two sets of that Broadcom. I wanted to put it in my, I guess, my main user directory so I could always find it. Or may I put it, I guess I put it, yeah, I was trying to move all my downloads to that FAT32 uh, drive, so I copied, I had to copy, copy it over there. But then when I went to the delete, the original folder full of all that stuff, I couldn't. And so I just left it because I didn't want to keep fooling with it. I didn't have time. Okay, what's this other one? ext 2 oh, haven't gotten any new ones yet. ext2exp lore execute. That's one of the. Uh, no, it was deleted. It says okay if I read it, the, uh, each in, each and every line is just the colored ones. I'd see what's going on. Oh, and a backup copy created. So it's all set up to where you could bring them back. But I was you have to go through the menus when you start this. You need to set up your it's all pretty easy, but you got a. It's a. Uh, it's a. I guess you could call it a CLI uh, interface because you don't have to type out the commands. You just go through menus. Uh, but anyway, you've got to set up your networking. Does it automatically though with your wired network? It won't even see the wireless card in. The, in, in I don't guess any laptops. And I don't think I see any wireless cards. And uh, but you got You need to do all that before you start the scan. And set what kind of files you want to scan. I mean, it's also got some defaults in there, but it. I want to be pretty thorough, so uh, I always go through and set everything to pretty much scan everything that you can, you know. And uh, um. Anyway, it's kind of odd. It's it's numbered like one, two, three, four, five, and all the things you can do. And uh, all this, it, instead of in the order of how you need to do them, so you need to actually uh, know what needs. To, you, you have to have a pretty good knowledge of what needs to be done, or you'd be kind of lost. If you go through there fast like I did the first time or two, you, you'll get you'll get to make mistakes and have to go back and do it again. So, uh, but I, le I learned the program because, like I said, I, I have quite a few older computers and. Um, you know, back when X, I don't really, I have one that still runs XP and, and the Linux because it's the only thing that runs some certain old programs that we have, but, uh, well, it, it's an older Dell laptop, Dell 6000, and it won't run anything newer than XP, so I'd really just have it on there so it can run some uh, auto diagnostic programs from OBD2 scanners, uh, e ECU scanners. It's the only reason I really have it still on there. But anyway, it's, it's been infected. I don't know how many times. Every time you touch it, it gets infected, and because uh, it's out, you know, out of support. So, uh, anyway, this is a good one to run on something older like that. And uh, although it has two gig of RAM in it, so it'll run the newer ones too. But I have some a lot older than that. I have everything from 386s up. So. There's no telling what I might be playing with. I used to do Windows a lot, but 
2005, I discovered Linux and never really looked back. I, well, I say I didn't look back. I still play with Windows, but I don't use it as a main operating system. I use Linux. I started with Fedora 5, and I'm up to... I use Fedora so 23 right now. I'm fixing to put, probably put 24 on this laptop. But uh, if I don't have to reformat the Windows 7 system, I won't because I have a lot of programs on there, and I don't want to start over. But if I, if I can get it cleaned up running good, then... I will uh, just reformat the whole thing. So, let's see, SDA1. Netfix, NetFX, MSI. Password protected, unable to scan. I'm not quite sure what that is. Upgrade net fx dash uh, forward slash net fx dot msi. That's an install file, but I don't know what it is. File is corrupted. So it says it's a uh, password protected and it says it's corrupted both. So that's a little not unusual necessarily, but I do wonder what it is. Not the, you know, it could be, since it's, especially since it's a dot .msi, it might have something to do with the Windows update. Oh, I had to fight those Windows 10 update nag screens. I finally found a GVX, GFVX or something. I don't, I don't want Windows 10 type app, and uh, finally got it all shut down and quit. I'm, I have two Win, Windows 7 systems. I actually have three. My other main, my other Fedora 23 machine has seven on it, and it actually, this is what got me into the mess. I, I decided I'd use the Windows Easy File Transfer or whatever it's called to uh, quickly put some of these apps on this laptop on the new Windows 7. It was brand new; it hadn't it had just been installed? Nothing ever done to it. No apps put on it. And uh, Avast on here. Had them both, you have them both running, and then you do it over the networks. I was doing it, and uh, vast one of the files that got was getting copied by that easy file transfer wizard. Threw uh, threw up a notice on the vast, and so I thought, crap, I've been copying. If this thing is full of stuff, which if you find one, there's usually always more, usually a lot more. Thought, then I've copied all that to my other system, so I started scanning them both. And it's been probably a month since I started. I just do it here and there because I don't like messing with all this. And uh, anyway, I finally got I cleaned that other one up over and over. I, I haven't used this on it yet, this uh, BBA. But uh, anyway, some, something I took out of there. There was several. I don't know how many things I got del that I let delete and uh, got deleted. And something broke the boot. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Something broke the boot. I was trying to get the phone away from my face so I wouldn't be so loud coughing. Something broke the boot on it, and I, I'm about to. I need more space on my Linux partition unit. <coughs> anyway, so I may, I may reformat it with just Fedora 24 and not have any Windows on there. I'm tired of having up all the maintenance and upkeep on a Windows system. I'm running two of them. It's too many. But it is kind of nice to have one laptop and one desktop with Windows on it. Uh, of course, I have three, really. I mean, I have set XP on the old laptop, 7 on this one, and 7 on a desktop that uh, I, I usually use it a lot to mess with my phones and do stuff, uh, like I was saying. Uh, and I can uh, VNC into it from my Linux, uh, Linux system. So... Uh, I kind of do that a lot. Okay, so um, it's slowed down on the. Uh, must be hitting some directories with uh, more, maybe larger files, or it's in uh, actually in program files, ArcSoft Total Media right now. Scanning DL files, I can see that DL dot DLL. So I'm gonna quit. Besides my arm, my arm's hurting holding this phone. <laughs> Okay, so I might come back here in a little bit when something a little more happens.